Thank you so much that you've joined me in this live broadcast. I know you're going to be touched and impacted by the gospel of God's grace. You know, I love the message of God's unconditional love. It's such a message of life. It gives so much power. Then if you watched last uh, yesterday's live broadcast, it was such a blessing with me and uh, Pastor Linda Mabata that was with me here in the studio. We've translated our whole five-minute Bible school into Zulu. Now, Zulu is the language that speak uh, that is spoken the most, or the most spoken language in South Africa. They are literally, I don't want to make a mistake, I think something like half of the population that can speak or understand Zulu. And the area, uh, Zulu land where they live, <coughs> or called KwaZulu Natal, uh, there are millions of Zulus living there that doesn't have this good news in their own language and I want to go so far to say there are millions of them living there not having the good news at all. So we are taking this message to KwaZulu-Natal. We'll be having a crusade there in August. And I'm really looking forward to that. And from there on we will have crusades in that area on a regular basis. We made 100 copies or 150 copies of this. That's what we're going to make for 150 leaders. So 150 leaders are going to get this message the five-minute Bible school where they're going to study it. It's going to be sent to um, to Linda Mabata, and he's going to uh, see that the people understand the gospel of grace and help them in that. So, thank you, Jesus. Uh, yes, for the good news. We're taking that good news out into KwaZulu Natal. So, those of you that um, that's got a passion to pray or speak the word of God or to give thanks to God for something like that, please go do that. Amen. If you want to be part of our crusades, you can um, you can just look at uh, when, when I announce we're going to have a crusade. We're going to have one in August. So if you want to join us in that crusade, please contact our office at info at dynamicministries.com or you can phone our office uh, at the numbers that is available um, under contact us. Right, today I'm going to speak a little bit um, about what I wrote down on the um, in the daily devotional let's go to exodus exodus chapter 34 exodus chapter 34 and um, we're going to look at uh, moses and we're going to look a little bit about sin and how god paid for our sin in jesus christ i've been talking a little bit about forgiveness yesterday i touched or the day before yesterday i touched on that and um, we're going to continue with that. We're going to read from verse 7. Exodus 34 verse 7 says, Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children's children, um, and uh, unto the third and fourth generation. So what he says here is God keeps mercy for thousands, He forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin. He will not pass by any guilty one. He will visit iniquity of the fathers upon the children's children, until the third and fourth generation. Before I explain that, let's just pray together. Father, I want to thank you that I could come right now and just share this gospel of your unconditional love with people all over the world. I thank you that they watch this. I thank you that they partake in this. I thank you that great grace is upon them all to understand. An enlightened mind. I speak over everybody. I say you've got an enlightened mind, an unveiled face, to see the glory of God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Right. <clears throat> what, uh, um, what happened here was, Moses saw God. He saw the splendor of God. He saw the glory of God. He saw the power of God. And God came and He revealed who He really was to Moses. And He said, Moses, who I am is I'm a God of loving kindness, graciousness, long-suffering, I'm abundant in goodness and truth, and I keep mercy for thousands. I forgive iniquity, transgression, and sin. And this is the wonderful thing, he says, and will by no means clear, or well, that word clear in Afrikaans is the word to go unpunished. By no means he will pass by any guilty one or any sin and let any sin go unpunished. So all sin has been punished. God does not let any sin. He will by no means clear the guilty. He will by no means pass by any guilty one. And he will visit this iniquity 
upon the children's children until the third and fourth generation. Now imagine that. So many times we've read that scripture as a God that is so furious about sin. He's not going to forget about any sin. He's not going to let any sin pass by before him. He is going to be so strict and judgmental about sin <laughs> that that you, uh, man, he is a God that knows sin. Now I thank God that he knows about our secret sin. He knows about the darkest secrets of your heart, my friend. He knows about the sin of your past, present and future. And he will even visit this sin until the third and fourth generation. So he is going to see what effect this sin has until the third and fourth generation. He's, he's going to, man, he looks into this sin into the generations. That's how serious he is about sin. And he will punish this sin and visit this sin until the third and fourth generation. Now, the mercy of God is, I also believe, uh, you know, the mercy of God is treating you better than what you deserve. Um, now, the mercy of God is the punishment for sin in the scripture. God is merciful, therefore he punishes sin. And because God's a merciful God, He has punished your sins in the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's go to Isaiah 53, a very well-known scripture. Isaiah 53. Um, Isaiah 53. And we just look at what has happened upon the cross, what Jesus Christ did for us upon the cross. It says here um, from verse... One, he says, who has, belie who has believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? So, who's the person that believes? Is the person that can see and understand the work of God, the arm of the Lord. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form no com nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed, uh, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs, he has carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. So, what happened is, he was seen as somebody that was stricken, smitten of God. Okay, because he was. And he carried our sickness. That's what we, we, we saw. That's what people saw when he hanged upon the cross. But what they didn't know, that he, that he was carrying our sorrows. And our sorrows was the punishment for our sin. Listen to this. He says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. So the punishment for our sins was upon him. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. So the chastisement for our shalom, for our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Now that healing doesn't only speak about physical healing. You know so many times it talks about physical healing and, and we've preached it that way, I preach it that way. I also believe it includes physical healing. But that word healed there means, also speaks of one of the, 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 the meanings of the word healed there is consumed. So what it says is, is that the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes or his bruises. Let's just go and look at the word stripes there in verse 5. See what it says here. By his uh, torment or bruises. So by him being tormented. So by his torment, he was wounded or tormented for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his torment, we are healed. So, uh, we must realize that sickness is much greater than just having sickness in your body. Sickness in your body can be a fruit and a result of a much greater sickness. Which is, um, which is what happened in Adam. Now, when Adam sinned, man became sick. And that is also what the word sick means. If you take the Hebrew picture values, and please do yourself the favor, go under uh, uh, in-depth studies, go and check out 
the the man the powerful 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 truths hidden in the words uh, in the Hebrew uh, picture values of the Hebrew alphabet. The word sect means to be separated from the teaching of God's grace. That's what it is, to be separated from the teaching of grace. So man became sick and God healed man. How did he heal man? By taking the law away and the punishment upon him for our sins. By taking the torment that had to be there so that we can be healed upon him. Now, it was a torment for God to go and stand under the law. It was a torment for God to hang upon a cross in a human body and to have all the sin and all the punishment for sin upon Him. Now, let's get back to um, to uh, uh, Exodus 34 here and we just see this wonderful thing of God visiting our sins. Amen. It says, um, keeping mercy for thousands, in other words, He's got this ability to Pay for the sins of many people. Forgiving iniquity, transgression and sin. So how does he forgive iniquity, transgression and sin? He will by no means pass by any guilty one. With what? With his forgiveness of transgression and sin. Because of the mercy that's in his heart. How will he do it? He will not pass by any guilty one. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children's children. And uh, it also sp- speaks of punishing. Judging sin. So how does he judge sin? He he judged sin upon the cross until the third and fourth generation, my friend. Those who love him and believe on this good news, he will show that mercy until until thousands, thousands of generations. Thousands of people will receive it that believe upon this good news. But I want to tell you, my friend, you have been forgiven into your generations. You know, um, this morning, just this morning, somebody phoned me and said to me that uh, one of her friends doesn't want to go to cell group anymore because he says that uh, he is, um, th- this grace message has now been, um, there's no uitgeput, I don't know how to put it in English, it's, it's, it's reached its, its point of, um, you know, satisfaction. You know, when you take, I don't know how, what's the right word, when you take sugar and you put it into a, a, a a cup, and he starts to stir the sugar, and he put more and put more. It comes to a point where it doesn't dissolve anymore. You know, it's it's enough now. So we've heard it all. You know, we've heard grace now. We've known the message. Jesus died for our sins. All those things, and 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 that's it. You want something more, my friend? Let me tell you something. There's only one gospel. There's only one message, and that is the message of God that became a human being obeyed on our behalf, died on our behalf, was resurrected on our behalf, and there is nothing more. That message applied to our lives is the glory and the fullness of God. Amen. So if this message uh, brings boredom to you, my friend, I don't know as if anything will bring any joy to you. You know, even when you look at, uh, uh, you know, when you go to one of these amusement parks, you, you can go and, I remember when I was in um, uh, Orlando, I went to Universal Studios, and we went on one of, on those rides, and we went on the Spider-Man ride, you know, which is this 3D uh, thing, it's, it's like virtual reality. Man, it's really like almost real. So you, you can, you, you sit in the spot, it, it's, when there's an explosion, you can feel the heat, for there's a real flame there. When, when, when it's going through the water, you feel the water, because they spray it on you. It's, we put these glasses on. For those of you in the States, you know this in South Africa. We don't really know that, that type of thing. We don't have it to that degree here. It is awesome. I mean, it is like, but I can go a second time, a third time, a fourth time, and then it is going to lose its punch. It's going to lose its power. And the reason is, is because I am in an amusement park. I am there to be amused. I'm there for the amazement of the of what they've done. And if we visit the gospel message, if we listen to messages, if we uh, um, if we read the Bible to see to, with the same perspective as what we go, we go to an amusement park. What is the next ride? I want to see the next ride. I want to see this more. Let me tell you something. The gospel is not there for your amusement. It is there for your salvation. (laughs) 
Hallelujah. It's there so that you can have the very being and nature of God. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you this, the simplicity of what I, I've just said makes something jump inside me as I've, just when I said it now. I can feel it. It is powerful. It gives me that freedom of that I won't have to chase after something more. I won't have to seek something deeper. I don't have to seek the presence of God. It indwells me. It will never leave me. And all I do is I enjoy it every day. One thing I want to say to you that can help you to, um, to, to protect you from being bored of the gospel and saying, well, I've heard this over and over. The vision that I have just to say to you before I explain this, the vision that I have is so that you can hear it over and over until the day I die um, or until Jesus comes. I don't want to preach any gospel. I don't want to deviate from this. I want to stick to the simplicity of Jesus and apply it to every scripture like I am applying it to a scripture right now. There are people that are watching me right now that's hearing this for the very first time, seeing that God visits sin with His mercy. Uh, and and he, he, he judges sin and he knows all our sins, the deeper secrets of our hearts. Thank God that he knows that so that all sin is punished. Thank God that he didn't take sin away just by punishing it upon the cross, but also by taking away the law, which means we are instantly forgiven and delivered 2,000 years ago. And today we come to the knowledge of our deliverance and the knowledge of our forgiveness. And then by the Holy Spirit, we see the power of its manifestation in our life. Amen. Right. One of the things that you must realize what will keep um, the gospel message um, fresh in your heart is if it's not just a theory to you. The gospel is not a theory, my friend. The gospel can be a theory, and if it's preached to you, it's a theory, which is believed and then exercised and experienced. So, when I come and I read the scripture that says, all my sins has been paid for, it will be foolish for me simply to say, well, all my sins are paid for, oh, bless God, hallelujah, amen now. What more? What's next? Uh, okay, but all your, your sicknesses are healed in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah, all my sicknesses. Okay, what next? He inspires you. His, his, his spirit is, is living inside you. It's not by your works. Oh, yeah, okay, what next? <laughs> My friend, we are not busy with amusement. We are busy with the truth of the gospel. If I tell you something that your sins are forgiven, it is a something that you can experience as power for eternity. Amen. If I tell you that you became the very righteousness of God, it's not, okay, I'm the righteousness. What next? Okay, you don't have the tithe to be blessed. Okay, what next? You don't even have to sow and reap to be blessed. What's next? I, well, wonderful. So next Sunday I'm coming to see what new thing I can learn. My friend, repent. Just repent. All that we are here is to tell you the truth of the gospel. And then, once you've heard it, we cannot teach you anything more. Once you have got that, then we are here to confirm what you know all the time and, ex and to, 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 to have a fellowship where we encourage each other that this is the only truth and the ultimate power of God. And there's nothing more. And this is the fullness of it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Keeping each other in that. Now, when, when it, what I've realized is people come to a place where it's not enough for them. It's when they keep it to a theory. And don't experience the power of that. Now, I want to say this. The power of you, for you to experience the power of this word is not in me to get you to experience that. It is for you to believe what this word says. Now, you might say, but Bertie, you know, uh, this word must be anointed. I want to tell you the Bible says that this gospel message is the power of 
of God unto salvation. I'm not your power unto salvation. I'm not your anointing. The gospel is anointed. The Spirit of God is the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God. If I preach Jesus, I'm preaching the very anointing and enablement of God. It is upon that Word. Um, the reason why the Word is anointed is because of what it says. And I've explained to you this way. If I tell you, you know, if you are um, alone at home, say so you're a woman, alone at home, and uh, and and I just before you went home, we were speaking about how people are murdered in your area, and all of a sudden, you know, you hear voices at your window. Let me tell you something. The moment you hear that voice at your window, and um, you hear they try to speak soft, the, just hearing that voice without even hearing what they say, because of the word that you heard before, that word will have great anointing or enablement or power in your life. You'll feel it. You'll experience it. Because you've believed what was said before. <laughs> Amen. Now it's carrying great power in your life. You even feel the presence of that, uh, uh, of that thief. You'll feel that presence. Now, if it was just a tape recorder that I've put at your, uh, um, you know, or a radio playing the voices of thieves, you would have felt the presence of the thief because of what you believe. In the same way, when you hear the word of the gospel and you see it as God's holy and only truth and it comes to you in truth, not watered down, mixed with the law, but as the truth, you will feel God. So I say to you, I feel God all the time. You might say, but Bethy, you are very spiritual. No, 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 the word is spiritual. The word is very spiritual. And I am spiritual because of the spiritual word. I believe the word. It's not because I've decided. But when you listen to the word, you realize that this is God's truth. If I feel in my heart, if I get a message, I am forgiven. Oh, hallelujah. That word of forgiveness is power unto a holy life. Let me show it to you. I say, I am forgiven. I am truly forgiven. And I walk as somebody. I come to God. I, I cultivate that truth in my heart. Amen. It's not, well, I'm forgiven. Okay, what's next? No, no. Now, I've got a whole lifetime where I can all the time come to God and as a person that is forgiven, I can, that truth, just that one word, you are forgiven forevermore. All your sins has been paid for. The law has been removed. You have been set free. You've been forgiven and delivered. Just that simple truth, my friend, is enough to keep you on a high until Jesus comes. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't need another revelation. That is it. Cultivate that. Make that practical in your life when it comes to you've sinned or when you see somebody else even. When I see somebody else sin, you know, or do something wrong that's outside of its, outside of their nature, I feel the forgiveness of God in my life. I share that forgiveness of God in my life. Amen. And I cultivate that truth. I don't let that thing become dull to me. I say, that is your work. No, I, that is simply keeping your eyes on Jesus and what He's done and the truth in your life. Hallelujah. God. You know, sometimes you must go and sit down and say, um, God has forgiven me into my generations and close eyes and just practice that truth. <laughs> now, I don't want to sound too spiritual, but simply ponder upon, think upon, like David said, in the middle of the night, I think of you, O God. I medita meditate upon your word. So, we meditate upon that truth. And you think of, I am forgiven. I stand before the Almighty God with the purity of God Himself. And you see it for yourself. You see God before you. You see how you come in before Him as absolute, holy, righteous, full of holiness, nothing coming short. And that's how you enter into your, the presence. And I want to say enter into the presence. That's, that's 
forgive me, I've, I almost said I've sinned by saying that it's wrong. You can't enter into the presence. That's how you stand before God. You are the very presence of God in this world. For God indwells you and lives in you here now. Amen. When it comes to healing, I am the healed. By His stripes I'm healed. It's not just I'm healed between me and Him. Uh, my body's healed. The whole man, a man as a total has been healed. My spirit's been healed. My mind is healed. My body is healed. I am healed. Hallelujah. For Jesus healed mankind. Amen. And I believe it and now I am healed. Healed in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. Listen to what Moses did here. He saw this awesome revelation and he made haste, bowed his head towards the earth and worshipped and said, If now I have found grace in your sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go amongst us, for it's a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance." Now, I tell you, this is what, what must happen when you hear this word, when you hear, I am forgiven, I am set free, my past is gone, I am a new man, there's nothing between me and God, sin in the future is forgiven, hidden sin in the heart is forgiven, there's nothing that can ever separate me from God. When that happens, what is for us? It's for us to say, well God, this truth is mine. And you come into my life and I partake of that now and every day. And I tell you, this revelation is, is as fresh and as powerful as the day when Jesus Christ, when God revealed this to Moses on the mountain. The blood of Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of God is as fresh and as powerful as when the thought came to the mind of God before the foundation of the world. Oh, my friend, this is the gospel of Jesus. Let's go to, um, to uh, 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 Philippians chapter 2. You know this now, by, you're supposed to know this off by heart now. Um, Philippians, sorry, Colossians. Colossians chapter 2 um, and verse 14. Listen to this. It is powerful. It says, And you being dead in your sins, and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, He has quickened together with Him, having forgiven you all trespasses. So, Jesus quickened us together with Him in the resurrection, because in His death all trespasses has been forgiven. Your trespass, the whole world's trespasses, everybody's trespass has been forgiven in Christ. When you believe and confess your unbelief, you partake of the forgiveness of sins and the blood of Christ comes and cleanses your mind of your sin consciousness and you are clean forevermore. Amen. We must realize that the forgiveness of sins has got everything to do with a cleansing of the mind. For your mind to be cleansed of sin consciousness, sin had to be paid for. For me to tell you, you don't, you're not guilty, you need first to be forgiven. Uh, if, if you owe somebody money and I tell you, you don't owe anything anymore, that debt first had to be written off. And then when you believe what I've said, your mind is cleansed from your guilt and the blood of Jesus washes that thing in your mind and you are clean. Amen. Hallelujah. How did He forgive us? He raised us up with Him because He has forgiven us. How did He do that? Blotting out the handwriting of doctrines. The handwriting of doctrines is the law. That's what the people, the Ten Commandments. Blotting out the handwriting of doctrine that was against you, which was contrary to you, and He took it out of the way by nailing it to the cross. And in such a way, He has spoiled powers and principalities over, uh, uh, and all those type of things. He spoiled that and He made a, a public show of them, triumphing over them in nailing the doctrine of the Lord to the cross. In such a way, you are forgiven and delivered. My friend, you don't have to think that you need to be delivered of your sin. You have been delivered of your sin. Believe it. And walk away from the lie that says you are not set free. 
so many times you maybe you use drugs or you you've got an alcohol problem you've got a sex problem you've got uh, a, a gossip problem you've got a uh, a problem where you always negative and look at the sins of people, a judgment problem, whatever. Don't think, well, I need to be set free from this. You are set free. You can stop now if you want. Just walk away from it. You've been free. Just stop. But I don't have the willpower. Repent. It's not by your willpower. He has set you free, my friend. You are free. You can stop now. The reason why you continue with this is because of the power of the lie that says you are bound to this thing and that you still need to be set free sometime. You are free. You can stop. Just walk away from it. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like to pray for you uh, right now. I don't know. Maybe we've run out of time. How long have I been ministering here? Um, It doesn't say. 30 minutes. (laughs) We've been going way over time. My friend... um, I want to tell you that God loves you unconditionally. Uh, Know this, that the power of the gospel is upon your life. You are free. You are the person that God wants you to be. You can go and just walk and be that person. Manifest that in Jesus' name. For the power of the gospel is the message that you are free. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Let me pray for you. Father, I want to thank you that I can pray for people right now. I can stretch forth my hands. Your anointing, your power comes and makes this real and true in their lives. Thank you, my God. You're an awesome, awesome God. In Jesus' mighty name. I declare that the sick is healed. I declare that you are free. I declare that the power of God is upon your life. You are the blessed of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Thank you that you've watched um, this this broadcast. Please, I want to ask you, you know, as a, just an act of, not just an act of evangelism, as evangelism, forward the link of dynamicministries.com to as many people as what you can. Grace Stream TV, uh, forward that the, the, the link to the, to the station to as many people as you can. I want to ask you, if you know of people that preaches the message of grace, um, I would like to contact them personally and ask them if they cannot send their material so it can be broadcasted on Grace Stream TV so there can be uh, a greater, uh, uh, now the English word, for skydenate, verity or something like that, I don't know the word, <laughs> uh, of preachers preaching there, saying the very same thing. You know, people might not like my style that much. They might like Joseph Prince more. They might like this guy more or whatever. We want to cater for everybody concerning style, but we only preach one word. We can compromise on how we say something, but never on what we say. Amen. So if you know of people, please, um, I don't care if he's young or old, uh, male, female, I don't care, uh, big ministry, small ministry, it doesn't matter. It's all about the truth. We want to see this truth being preached and proclaimed. So I ask you, my friend, um, would you just send this to people? I'm not trying to build my ministry. It is all about the spreading of the gospel. It's a way in which you can evangelize. Amen. And um, yeah, man, just be happy with me. Again, I'm so happy that we've translated the 500 Bible School into Zulu. We're going to impact millions. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you've watched. Remember this one thing, you can always enjoy the love of God. Amen.